Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a forest on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylics. I'm going to guide you through each of the steps of this landscape painting. So first we're going to lay our canvas down um, horizontally and I'm going to draw the composition of this landscape and most landscape paintings have a horizon line that divide the top, the bottom, like the sky and the ground. So I'm going to position mine at the five inch mark. So I measured five inches from the bottom and I drew a horizontal line across the canvas. And then I'm going to draw my path. So the path in this painting is not centered. It's offset towards the left. So this path does not go to a point. It goes to the horizon line, but then it goes flat, but it gets wider. So I'm just going to draw kind of a curvy line and it kind of um, flutes out at the bottom. And then we can start doing the painting. So in this painting, I worked on the sky first and I did a blend of three colors. So I'm loading my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. We're gonna call that dark green, turquoise blue. I'm going to call that turquoise and titanium white. I'm gonna call that white. So green, turquoise, and white. And so this background has a kind of a bright, over the path and then it's kind of darker on the left and the right side so this is a very simple kind of painting of the background and it's all done with up and down strokes relatively thin layer and we're going to do this thing where we're blending our three colors but we're not over blending so these streaks in the sky are supposed to represent like trees and light that's way in the distance kind of a misty um, area in the forest that's further away so i started with my light colors so you want to load your brush in mostly white by the way this is a three quarter inch flat brush and i loaded it in water kind of tapped it dry and the water helps to thin the paint a little bit but mostly white little bits of green and turquoise so this is going to be our brightest part over the path you just want to make sure you use a lot of white in that area um you don't want to grab any of your you don't want to grab too much of your darker colors because we don't want that area to be too dark and then when you start working on the left and right side of that you want to start adding more of your dark colors um, it might help if you uh, paint the left and the right next so you know how dark it's going to get or you can just kind of work anywhere in the center between your light and your far left and right side. Um, but basically, you're doing all up and down strokes. Um, you can still use that white and you're just going to kind of create this gradient where it gets kind of medium and too dark on the far left and the right. You want to try not to over blend your colors. We want to see those streaks in there. Those streaks are supposed to represent trees that are further away and just up and down strokes. So there's still some white in the far left or far right part right now, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that I make this part darker than my bright center. So you're just going to keep grabbing your turquoise, keep grabbing your green, um, make sure your strokes go all the way up, all the way down. So I'm not stopping my brush in the center of the canvas. They're going all vertical up and down, gently blend this center, but I don't want to mess up that center. It should be bright above the path. And you're just going to keep doing the same thing on the left side of your path. So this part is dark and then it gradually fades into our brightness in the center part over the path. All up and down strokes. So you see my strokes going below the horizon line. That's okay. If you wanted to have a piece of painter's tape there, you can do it that way. Um, it it's okay if my strokes are going under that line because I'm going to be painting the ground area over that anyway and so that's fine so I'm just gonna keep applying these colors and get this white and I can let that white kind of gradually blend in so lots of um, up and down strokes that blend together but don't over blend 
If you need to add a teeny bit of water to your brush because it's not gliding all the way across the canvas, you can. You don't want to add too much water because then it shouldn't be dripping. So there's our bright center. Um, you just want to be careful if you try to go back and blend this center. You don't want to make it blend in with the rest of the sky. And also not to over blend because then your colors might all start looking the same and we don't really want that either. So I can go back in and add more color if needed to make sure that all the canvas is covered. But I don't want to overwork these areas. Next, we're going to paint the ground area. So this is to the left and the right of the path, utilizing the same colors. And so our ground has a little bit extra white in the distance and it gets slightly darker towards the bottom. That's going to create some depth in your color by doing that. So I started by loading my three quarter flat in mostly white, but grabbing that green as well. And you can grab that turquoise. Um, basically the goal is to paint our ground. We're going to add texture to this ground with a different brush later on, but right now we just really want to cover this area with our color so that there's no white canvas still left. So what I'm doing, I'm doing kind of horizontal, a little bit curvy. I also made my, um, the land way in the, like the horizon line, it goes kind of above an almost a hilly way. If you want to, if it's easier to make it just completely flat, you could do that. I made mine a little bit wavy at the top to make it look like there's kind of higher elevation land back there, but not super high above the horizon line. It should still be relatively flat. So as I'm working my way down, I'm my, the goal is just to kind of make that color get kind of darker towards the bottom. So more turquoise and um, green towards the bottom, but but kind of back here, we use that white to kind of blend it back so it's a little bit lighter towards the back. So um, the strokes are kind of um, curvy. They're kind of curving down towards the path, kind of at an arc. So they're not exactly completely horizontal, so curvy strokes. Um, it's okay if I see some like brush strokes right now um, that we're gonna go back again with texture and that's fine you, you can see your strokes if they're like stopping in the center or if they look kind of textury that's fine so i'm doing the exact same thing on the left it does not have to be a mirror opposite of color if your colors are different on the left if it blends differently on the left that's fine so again the goal is to cover the ground area up. Um, I noticed that if you mix turquoise and the green together that creates darkness so if you want to add more turquoise mixed with green towards the bottom to make that dark you can. Also the path like I'm painting some strokes over the path because I know I'm going to paint over the path anyway so if your green goes into the path area that is fine. But I am leaving that path area blank and open for now without any paint. Next, we're gonna rinse this big flat brush off and sit to the side. I'm going to get a smaller flat brush called a 12 bright brush. It's like a flat brush that's about a quarter inches wide and the color raw umber. And I'm going to be using this smaller flat brush to paint my path. So just like how we filled up the ground area, I'm going to fill up the path area knowing that I'm going to add lighter and colors to this later. So just with the raw umber, I'm using the tip of the brush. I'm not using like the full width, just the tip, doing thin horizontal strokes that create that path 
So way in the distance, we have thinner strokes. The path kind of um, turns slightly to the left, so I'm doing kind of thinner strokes back there. Um, when I get to the bottom, I guess I can use more of the full width of the brush if I need to. Again, we're trying to fill up this canvas area. Um, our path is not a perfect path. It's kind of rugged on the left and the right. It's a forest path, so there's some... Um, ground cover that might be covering part of it. It's not a straight um, defined path so don't be afraid to let your brown go out into the green area or leave some green in the path area and later on we can even paint some green that's overlapping going over our path area. Um, but just try to cover up whatever canvas the white part is still showing through. If it's not 100% coverage, that's okay. It's still the first layer of this part. Next, we're going to paint some of the trees that are way, way in the distance. These are going to be very thin, um, very abstract vertical lines that are above our horizon line. And so we kind of did that when we painted the background. We have those streaks, but we want to do some more defined tree lines. And these are not going to be brown trees. These are going to be very light colored trees. I'm going to mix on my palette. Um, this grayish greenish turquoise color so you can kind of have fun making up your colors and you want to water it down just slightly so that your grayish green color can be light and there's no way you can mess this up you just want to make sure whatever color you mix together with your green turquoise and brown they use the majority white so that'll give you that gray looking color and basically with your gray color that you mixed on your palette we're just going to create some vertical tree lines and these tree lines are in the distance far, far away. They are above our horizon line. They vary a bit. So when I go to reload my brush, I might grab a different amount of white. I might add maybe a little bit more brown to one or more green to one. Um, so we, I mean, we kind of did this when we left the streaks in the sky. Those are kind of supposed to represent also trees way in the distance, but these ones might be a little bit closer. Um, so just doing this, I'm not going to really paint any over the path area. So they're all just on the left and the right in the path. Um, there's not a ton of lines, just a few here and there. They might be thicker. So this one right here that I'm doing might be slightly thicker. It might actually flute out a little bit like a trunk and then get thinner as I go up. But these should not be thick lines at all and they should not be dark. So utilizing that green and that turquoise is going to help those tree lines kind of blend in with what we have going on in the sky. There might be some that are in my bright white area but those ones are very thin and some of those lines don't even go all the way to the top of the canvas they just kind of fade out so that's an, a simple way to create some depth in your forest painting Then once we have these really far away trees established, we can start painting our bigger trees that are towards the bottom of the canvas. So pretty much in the middle of the land area is where we have um, two or three larger trees. I did some like three medium sized trees further out. So I'm gonna start with my larger tree that's on the right side and I'm going to use a lot of brown for that. You don't have to rinse your brush, it's okay if those other colors are still on your brush. We you wanna grab mostly the raw umber color and a um, little bit of water helps to get that brown to flow as well. But you wanna start at the bottom and also some Mars black. So load your palette with some Mars black as well because these should be dark 
almost silhouette type trunk. So I'm going to utilize that black to really make this trunk dark. Um, it'll be dark first and then we can add some highlight on it later. But I'm just really just kind of like sketching out the trunk. So the trunk flutes out wider at the bottom and then it goes kind of more narrow in the center and the edges are a little bit kind of like wavy wobbly on the edges so it's not like we're painting um, perfect rectangle shapes it's a tree so it is a rectangular form but the edges are not straight they're kind of wavy on the edges and the trunk flutes out at the bottom we don't see the top of these trees so we're basically just painting it to the top of the canvas and letting that run off um, off the side of the canvas. We can also paint branches off the edges. So towards the top and maybe towards the middle, we might have narrow, smaller branches. So this is just like a, a line that I'm painting that goes diagonal and it branches out very in a narrow way. It doesn't branch out horizontally. It branches out um, diagonally towards the top. Um, so I did a few branches going out from that tree and I can go ahead and paint another tree on the left side of the path. Same similar size tree. It's dark. It's um, it flutes out at the bottom. The trunk gets kind of narrow. So you can kind of just sketch this along and kind of form your tree goes off all the way to the top of the canvas, goes off the edge of the canvas. When you load your brush, you can add bits of water in there, but also twist your brush and that kind of helps to distribute the paint to the tip of the bristles. Make sure you're grabbing bits of black. This should be very dark. In, ter in terms of contrast, it should be providing very, very stark, dark contrast compared to the trees that we did way in the distance. So that one also had a few branches. Um, you can do more branches if you want. We can always go back and add more branches later. And then, so those are our largest trees. And then we wanted to start adding some medium sized trees. So these trees are also dark. They're not much further away but they are further away so they are a little bit smaller and you can paint these anywhere in your forest area um, you can paint trees um, closer to the path or further out into the land on the left and the right you just want to pay attention to the placement so if it's further up closer to the horizon line it's going to be a, a thinner trunk um, you can also create depth in this by adding a little bit more um, lightness to it and I can show you that but this one basically for now I did this particular tree um, the same amount of darkness but what I can do is create one that's lighter so I added titanium white to my brush that time you can see how much lighter that is this one's further out um, or perhaps the light is hitting it different so it's lighter. You can see how the base of that is higher up from the other trees that I did. Um, it's almost the same lightness as the ones that I did along the horizon line, but these ones happen to be below our horizon line. So I can add different amounts of my brown and the white to it to create some of these lighter trees that are smaller. Again, the trunk is basically the same technique. It still kind of flutes out at the bottom. It's still kind of wobbly on the edges. We can see some of the branches in these trees, but they might not be very distinct. They might just kind of fade away as they get to the top. And then we can continue to paint more trees. So you can paint as many trees as you want, or if you don't want to do as many trees, you don't have to do this many trees, but I'm going to basically be doing the same thing on the left side of the path. Um, trees that are further up, that are thinner and smaller, 
trees that might be lighter and thinner and more in the distance. It's okay if your branches kind of intertwine with each other. I'm going to grab a little bit of water, some more white, and do a lighter, smaller tree kind of more up here. So this guy lives right here. He's brighter. We don't see a very distinct shape. It's just kind of a line that branches out and then fades away. I'm going to introduce the color raw sienna to my palette next and provide, um, I'm going to use this raw sienna to create some texture on my tree. So our trees that are closer to the bottom, we might see some more detail on them. The light from the background wherever the light source is coming from it's hitting that part so the light that's closest the, the side of the tree that's closest to the path is where the brighter part of our tree is going to be so I just took this raw sienna and just did like very loose strokes to create the texture some loose sort of wavy strokes that go vertically up the tree I'm going to leave the right side of the tree uh, relatively dark and shadowy and then on the trees that are on the left side of the path, the bright part is on the right side and the dark part is on the left side. So I'm letting that uh, raw sienna, and you can even grab a little bit of white if you need to with this raw sienna. It's not, the goal is to not cover all of the tree. It's just to add some very loose textured kind of strokes that create the light part, but leave a lot of that dark part still showing through. And then I'm going to grab some of this black and just kind of go back over the right part and uh, distribute it kind of into that lighter part as well so blending it but also making sure that this part is extra shadowy so I'm just kind of lightly brushing on some of this black on the opposite parts of the highlights and next we're going to do a technique that requires the fan brush so I generally use the fan brush to create pine trees but I'm going to show you how to use this fan brush to create some ground cover for our forest so you can take pretty much any size fan brush and do this I went ahead and loaded my palette with brilliant yellow green and I'm going to double load my fan brush in the dark green and the light green. And you want to get a lot of that paint right there on the tip of the brush. So you're basically just tapping the edge of the fan brush and just kind of going left and right, back and forth. And then when you go to reload, you can grab different amounts of the green and the light green. green. We, we want to kind of vary this. So um, letting those colors kind of blend together is going to also create that texture. And we want to have a little bit more darker green towards the bottom because it's the closer parts, more shadowy down there. And then a little bit more lighter green towards the top. You don't have to cover up all of your first layer you um it would take a long time to cover all that up just by doing this with the fan brush but just a lot of the areas you're just doing clusters of that green so right here it got a little bit too bright so i'm just going back over and just kind of smudging that again with the brush and just really just tapping it you're using utilizing that fan brush almost like a sponge to create all that interesting texture on the ground You want to go around your trees as much as possible. So that might mean kind of angling your brush different ways to fill in the areas around the trees, between the trees. Again, a little bit extra dark towards the bottom and a little bit more brightness towards the top. You can have some of your ground texture overlap parts of the path. So you can take that and kind of extend it so that it looks like it's kind of growing over the path. So back here I did a little bit more of the light green permanent but also grabbed a little bit of white that really uh, made some extra brightness in that area because I know that's where my there's a bright light shining way in the distance. 
and just go back and kind of reload in your next color. So we're just doing combinations of the dark green, the light green, a little bit of white. Just try not to go crazy with too much titanium white. You can also do another kind of stroke with this fan brush. So instead of tapping it, you can brush it to create kind of like a grassy texture. So if you brush the bristles up and kind of drag the paint up a little bit, it'll create more of a grassy textured stroke. And just by doing that variety kind of really gives some interest in the ground. So it's not all consistent all throughout. There's a variety of the greens and variety of different kinds of strokes. And next I'm going to rinse this brush off and dry to get it to kind of start over because I'm going to be doing the exact same technique but up in the trees. So I'm going to create the leaves of the trees, the tree canopy. And these ones have a little bit more of the darker green to start out with. So I'm going to load a little bit of black with the green. This is going to create our first layer of the tree canopy dark. So this is our dark shadowy part of our leaves. And basically same exact technique that I did on the bottom. Um, you're just tapping the brush over the, the top part of your branches along the all over the top part of the canvas. Um, you will want to leave a lot of that background still showing through. So do your first layer with the darker green and then you can go back and do another layer with the lighter green. And when you add the lighter green to there, you don't have to rinse your brush off between that, um, but that lighter green is going to blend with your darker greens to create some more um, deeper green colors in there. So you're just tapping the brush along the top parts of the trees to create that interesting tree texture. It's okay if they're hanging down a little bit. Next, I'm going to paint individual smaller branches that are attached to our bigger trees. So I'm going to do this in the middle of my tree trunk areas. And I'm going to be using a four round for this. And I'm mixing raw umber with the raw sienna to create kind of a medium dark brown. You can also just do this with black if you want because these are relatively dark. And you're basically going to paint some thinner branches in the middle of your trunks. So this is going to give us kind of a medium um, area where we can add some more tree foliage, add more leaves to our little branches. So just little branches that are sticking out. You wanna use the tip of the brush when I did this, I slightly watered it down and that really helps the flow to get those thin branches. Then you wanna go ahead and rinse and dry and then you could use the fan brush for the little leaves on these branches, but I just use the round brush for this because it's a smaller area and I can really um, concentrate on where exactly I wanna put these little tree um, leaves. So I'm using the dark green and the light green and I'm just dotting it. So I'm just creating little dots of paint strokes on my little branches, and that's gonna create uh, a middle area where we have some more foliage. So we have the, the, the tree canopy at the top, we have leaves going on in the middle, and then we have all our ground cover. So a lot of green in this painting. If you want to, you can utilize the round brush to do some more detail work on the ground. So maybe if you want some grass strokes at the base of your tree trunks, you can just go back, go in there and just paint some grass strokes. So I'm going to do this to some of the trees. Very, very subtle detail. If you want to paint um, some other grass strokes, maybe towards the bottom, if you want to add like little flowers on the bottom you can so there's a lot of fun little details that you can add on your ground next i'm going to use a 12 bright brush to add some highlight to my path so i am just going back over my path with some more raw umber 
at the bottom, but I also want to add some brightness towards the back because a lot of light is hitting that area way back there. So I mix the raw umber with the titanium white and I'm very lightly, um, you wanna be really careful with that white because it is a strong color and it will take over super fast. I'm not trying to white the path out. I just want a brightness way in the back and then blending it down the bottom so that it is slightly darker towards the bottom. If you need to go back and add more of the darker brown in there towards the bottom, you can. These are just left and right strokes using the tip of the bright brush. Next, I am going to demonstrate how I did the shadows in these trees. So these shadows are very thin layers of paint. I didn't rinse my brush off, but I am using the raw umber. So if you wanna rinse your brush off, you can, and just grab your raw umber and water it down slightly. So this needs to be super thin and you wanna take your time doing this and kind of figure out what direction you want your sh shadow to go. So for the trees on the right side of the path, I made my shadows going diagonally to the right. And the trees on the left side of the path, they kind of went vertical, but then they kind of uh, skewed a little bit to the left. Um, you can, change the direction of the shadows if you want them to go a different direction and you're doing like little left and right strokes using just the tip of the brush you don't want to press too hard just very delicately um, hold that brush if you want you can do a continuous line for the shadow so for these i'm going to show you that you can just do a line that just continues down instead of just doing like left and right sort of scribble expressive strokes. You can just stroke it down, but it should be very light. It's dark color, but it's still kind of see-through. We still see some of that grass showing through. And if you want to, you can go back with your green and um, go back over some of your texture to kind of go back, um, add some texture to your shadow area. So I'm just taking this dark green and just kind of on the left and the right, of the shadow and adding some more dark green texture in there for the ground cover and using the flat brush because it's um, smaller I can really concentrate on where I want to apply that texture just going back in here just a few little dark green dabs of color in there and if I want I can even go back with some lighter green and kind of touch up some of this texture back here Right here, I decided to do some more grass texture. So I'm using the tip of the brush to kind of drag some of this lighter green upwards. It's optional, but it is a way to just kind of add some more texture in your ground area. Just going back in, kind of touching up the greens. So just creating a nice variety of strokes and colors in the ground co cover is going to give you that impression of the sort of almost realistic looking forest floor with all that green. You can even utilize some of your browns. So I'm taking some of this raw sienna and titanium white. And I'm just gonna do a few little spots of texture over here on the left, kind of far in the distance. Gives it kind of a golden sort of tone. So right here, I'm adding that texture because my fan brush couldn't really reach those small areas back there, but I'm using the same kind of stroke, just dabbing the tip of the brush with that bright brush, touching up my shadows. And then I wanted the base of my tree trunk to be a little bit more fluted out so I just kind of took the brush and made my roots kind of extend out a little bit more on that particular trunk. So you can see kind of that root and you can do that. Um, it's optional, but you can do that with all your trees if you like that look. And then a final sort of whimsical thing that I'm going to do with my painting is paint little tiny white dots way in the distance, just on the upper part above the horizon line, 
like little fireflies deep into the forest or little bugs reflecting the light. And I'm just taking that white and making little dots kind of all throughout that area. I added a few strokes of white right here on this hill. Perhaps that light is hitting that and it's a bit brighter right there. And then I'm going to do one final last touch up to this. I want to add more foliage in the tree canopy. So I'm going to go back to my fan brush and add some more greenery up at the top. So I'm utilizing that dark green and that bright green filling up especially the upper left and right corners where a lot of that canopy takes place. A little bit of water on that brush kind of helps to thin that paint down a bit. Also gives, helps it to flow a little bit better. So over here in the upper right corner area a little bit extra uh, leaves up in that area just make it a little bit full. I did leave kind of the middle portion open above the hill so the tree canopy kind of has a gap between the left and the right sets of trees. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint into the forest. I hope you, that you enjoyed this acrylic painting tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.